section 3.2 is about word problems and a lot of these have actually shown up before and really it's of these five options that are here the first four of them actually also show up in chapter one when we had the word problems there so the direct translation is basically where you take a sentence and turn it directly into symbols um, and then geometry so that would be like area and perimeters and things um, mixtures that would be stuff like when we had questions about like if somebody was going to invest money in two different things and how much are they going to invest in each part or maybe the ones where it was actually like mixing stuff like you have this acid solution this other acid solution and you want to mix them together and you want to have an acid solution of 50 percent or something like that those are also going to be mixtures um and, and they showed up in chapter one and so did the uniform motion where we had it like with um, like riding in a boat and that kind of thing um where we can still do these but now we have some extra flexibility and that's why they show up again because now you can solve them as a system the way that we did it in chapter one even though we didn't really talk about it there were points where we were using substitution um, because we were basically just using some kind of constraint and then kind of rephrasing one variable in terms of the other and we didn't really call it what it was but that was substitution the new one is this like this last very last thing here this we have not had at all so finding the intersection of two linear functions um it's actually not that tough and like when you get one you'll know what it is because it looks nothing like the other ones so that's actually really helpful um, but that's the one that's brand new the other ones kind of aren't um so like for number one we have two um basically two statements here that are telling us about a couple of numbers that we don't know so the sum of the two numbers is 64 and then one of the numbers is 16 more than three times the other and we want to find those two numbers okay first of all there are two things that we don't know right there are two numbers so i'm going to need some kind of symbolic representation here so i'm going to say let x denote The first number and let y represent or denote the second number so and let y denote the second number right it doesn't really matter what you call them most people are going to either call them x and y or a and b Right? I, mean, I think those would be the most conventional things but I guess as long as you use some kind of symbol where you're using different symbols so you can tell them apart I suppose that would actually work um, but let's see the first sentence so since we're doing a direct translation we should be able to turn that first sentence right into symbols so the sum of the two numbers is 64 the first number is x the second one's y then we could write this as x plus y equals 64 and then the second sentence um remember think of is as being the equal sign so on one side of the equal sign you have one of the numbers and then on the other side you have 16 more than three times the other so for the second sentence so for one of the numbers it doesn't really matter which one so i'm just going to say x but that's equal to 16 more than three times the other one so 16 more than three times y so that would be 3y plus 16 or if you want to write that as 16 plus 3y that's certainly fine um, if we're going to do this with elimination then you would probably want this in uh, standard form so i suppose then you'd have x minus 3y equals 16 in standard form since with standard form you want to have the x and y terms on the same side and then the constant on the other so it looks like that's what you would do and if you're looking at this and you're going hold on this is already solved for x why would you just do substitution here i'm right there with you i would um but in this section um, like if you look in the book a lot of this is done with elimination 
So I kind of wanted to work a lot of that in there to kind of match things up. But yeah, if you're looking at this and you're going, this is already solved for X, so couldn't you just do substitution? Uh-huh. And I think we got enough room to where we could actually do both. So I think what most people would do, because you already got one variable solved for, would be to then say like, okay, well then if you used substitution, then you could say, well, we know what X is, 3Y plus 16. You could say then 3Y plus 16, right? And I'll just put this in parentheses since that's representing X, um, plus Y equals 64. But those parentheses are just for show. They don't really do anything here, right? We're just adding a bunch of stuff. So if you add things together, you're gonna get 4Y plus 16 equals 64. And then if you solve this, you subtract 16 from both sides, you get 4y equals 48, and you end up with that y is equal to 12, right? And then um, in order to get x, um, you could sub into either original equation. And even though the second one is solved for x, I'm gonna use the first one just because it looks simpler. So x plus y equals 64, but then y is 12. So x plus 12 equals 64. And then that would mean that x is 52. Um, and then to check these, well, I think we got enough space for this. To check the x plus y is 64, I think you can just see it, right? 12 plus 52 is gonna be 64. Um, checking the other one is probably worth it though. Um, so if we check the other one, so 3y, plus 16 would be three times 12 plus 16, but three times 12 is 36. So that's 36 plus 16, which is 52. And that's X and that's what's supposed to happen. So that works. Okay. Yeah. So if you're going to use substitution, be done right here. Um, but you could also do this with elimination. Um, I hope I got the space for it. All right, so if you used elimination, you'll get the same thing. Um, so you'd have your system. So you'd have the x plus y equals 64. And then I'm going to write the other one in general form. So x minus 3y equals 16. And then you want to eliminate one of the variables. I would probably jump on the y just because they're opposite signs already. So then I would just multiply both sides of the top equation by three. So three times X plus Y equals three times 64. And then X minus three Y equals 16, still on the bottom. And then if you simplify the top, distribute the three on the left side, that's three X plus three Y. Right side, that's 192. And then X minus three Y equals 16. All right, if we add, then we got additive inverses of the y term, so those are gone. You're gonna add out, we're just gonna get 4x. And then over here, this is 208. And 208 divided by four is 52, right? So you're gonna get that x is 52, which is what we're supposed to get since we already know the answer. And then um, I guess I'd have to go, I gotta use this space over here to sub into an original equation um, and I'll just use the first one again so x plus y equals 64 and we said if x is 52 so 52 plus y equals 64 then yeah y is going to be 12 and we get the exact same thing um, so if you're looking at this and thinking well why would you do the elimination like the substitution looks a lot easier considering this is already solved for x and even if it wasn't to solve x plus y equals 64 for either x or y is not that hard, right? It's one step. Um, it just depends on what you see first, right? The substitution, for me, that's easier. And I think for some people that's easier, but there are gonna be other people who just see the elimination first. And I would say like, whichever one you see first, go with it, right? Because that's where you can at least follow your intuition. And I think that's a good thing, um, but it will work either way. All right, so we've got um, direct translation. There are a couple of them uh, that show up in the homework. And then geometry. 
All right, so the perimeter of a rectangle is 96 meters, and then if the width were tripled, the value that you get, so three times the width, would be 36 meters more than the length. That's a lot of stuff. All right, let's worry about the first sentence first, then we can get to that second one. So generally, the perimeter of a rectangle, you just add the four sides up, but you have two sides that are one length and two sides that are another length, right? That's, how, that's what rectangles look like. So two times the length plus two times the width is usually how that's written. But we also know that the perimeter is 96 meters because it says so in that first sentence. But if both of these are equal to P, then they must be equal to each other. So we'd have to have 2L plus 2W equals 96, right? That would have to be right if they were both equal to P. All right, and now what about this other side or this other um, sentence here? So I guess really this is the first sentence, right? So I can put that in here. So in a way, this is like a direct translation right now, just with a little extra step, because we had to use that formula for perimeter. But then the second sentence, all right, let's see what we got. Um, three times the width would be equal to 36 meters more than the length. So three times the width would be 3w, 36 meters more than the length would either be length plus 36 or 36 plus length. So I'm going to make my L cursive just so it doesn't look like a 1, right? Um, okay, so we've got our two equations here. I guess if you want to put this in standard form, um, so maybe minus L plus 3W equals 36 in standard form. Right? Just get the L and the W on the same side and the constant on the other. Um, all right, well, uh, we could go either way here. I guess this one, we can just go ahead and do it. Um, if if uh, you want to do it with elimination first, maybe this time. So we'd have 2L plus 2W equals 96. And then minus L plus 3W equals 36. So since we got the 2L here minus L, I would just multiply both sides of the second equation by 2, and then that way we can eliminate L, solve for W. So that's what I think I would do with this. So we're going to leave the top one the same, 2L plus 2W equals 96. Then the bottom, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times negative L plus 3W equals 2 times 36. And so top still staying the same, 2L plus 2W equals 96. But now the bottom is going to be minus 2L plus 6W equals 72. And if we add those together, we're going to get an 8W on the left. And on the right, let's see, that's 168. And 168 is divisible by 8. Um, because so what you would get for W... It's 168 over 8, and that's going to end up being 21. Right? Since 160 over 8 is 20 and 8 over 8 is 1, it's 21. Um, and so then you would get that. So that's part of the answer, right? So W equals 21. That's part of the answer. And then if we wanted to sub into an original equation. Um, I guess the more conventional one would be the perimeter formula. So to use the 2L plus 2W equals 96. And then we know that W is 21. So you have 2L plus 2 times 21 equals 96. All right. So 2 times 21 is 42. So you'd have 2L plus 42 equals 96. And then if you subtract 42 from both sides, 2L is going to be 54. So L is 27. Okay. Um, and then I guess we could check with our two original equations. I think I've got enough space right here to do it. So to check, and I guess like we were doing the checks in the last section, um, just sub it on the left side, simplify it, and then see if you get what, what's there on the right. So just use the standard form to do it. 
So like the first one, you'd have two times 27 plus two times 21. All right, two times 27 is 54, then this is 42. So 54 plus 42, that's 96. Okay, good. Um, and then the other one, minus 27 plus three times 21, that's gonna be minus 27 plus 63, which is going to be 36. And that's what we're supposed to get there. So that also works. And you could do this one by substitution. Um, I think it would be easier to sub in for L. So if you were gonna use substitution here, I think I've got a little bit of space to do it. So for substitution, um, I guess we'd go back to having the 2L plus 2W equals 96, and then the 3W is equal to L plus 36. Because I think this one's pretty easy to solve for L. And then with that one, you could say, well, then L would be 3W minus 36, right? And so then you could sub into the first one, and you'd have the 2 times 3W minus 36 plus 2W equals 96, right? And then I guess distribute that two. So 6W minus 72 plus 2W equals 96. You could combine terms and say 8W minus 72 is 96. If you add 72 to both sides, 8W is 168. So W is gonna be 21, right? Just like it was before. And then um, if you go and sub into an original equation, you'll get the right length. So I guess you have to do a couple more steps, but eventually you get the length is 27. Um, so like the go back and sub in part, that would look just like it would up here, where I just did it with the perimeter. And yeah, you get the 27 again. All right, um, so geometry ones, that's another option that could show up here. Mixtures. Um, and I wanted one that wasn't actually just like a mixture of liquids. So this this fits, right? Dimes and, well, dimes and quarters can be liquids if the temperature is hot enough, I suppose. But that's not really what I was going for here. Um, so it says Paul has 40 dimes and quarters worth a total of 850. So how many of each coin does he have? So how many dimes does he have? How many quarters does he have if he's got 40 coins and they add up to that much? All right, so this is the one where usually you make a table. Um, so I guess we're gonna have our two coins, right? Or I guess we'll say coin type, that feels better. So we're gonna have dime quarter. All right, so then I guess we're gonna need the, the total value of uh, dimes and the total value of quarters. So this part you probably can leave out, um, but I kind of want to have it in here for descriptive reasons, like just what these are worth, right? I mean, I think this is something that everybody's going to know and, and probably doesn't need to be reminded of or to have like actually written in the table, but uh, I want to kind of point out how everything works in here. Um, so those are going to be the coin values if they're written, I guess, in, in dollars. Since that was written in dollars, that seemed like the way to go. Then um, the number of coins. Oh, and I guess I don't have a total in here. All right, put a total in here. Um, all right, so the number of coins. Um, we don't know either of these numbers, so you could say that one's going to be X, that one's going to be Y. If you set the, and then the total is 40. If you set this up as just X and Y like that, you're gonna end up doing elimination. But if you rewrite Y as 40 minus X, or I guess rewrite X as 40 minus Y, then you could do it with substitution, either way. Um, and then the value of, um, I, I guess I'll say total value of, coins maybe where then we can say okay here it's 10 cents times x so that would be 0 0.10x here it's 25 cents times y so 0.25y and we know the total value is supposed to be 850 
So then if you were going to use elimination, because this is actually the kind of thing that we had in chapter one, where if you just rewrite y as 40 minus x, then you can do it all in a single variable, pretty much. Um, but to, to do it the, the other way that's kind of new to chapter three, if we're going to use elimination, then your two equations are in these last two columns. Because with the number of coins, when you add the number of dimes and the number of quarters together, you have to get 40, which means that x plus y equals 40. And then when you add the value of the dimes and the value of the quarters, you got to get 850. So that would be 0.1x plus 0.25y equals 850. Um, and if you were going to do that, I would probably clear those decimals out. So if you're going to do it this way, I would say leave the top one alone, so the x plus y equals 40. But then on the bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by 100 so I can move the decimal point over two places because I've, I've got to because of that 0 0.25. So 100 times 0.1x plus 0.25y equals 100 times 850. And so then, I guess top one still staying the same, x plus y equals 40. Bottom one, 100 times 0.1, that's 10. That's going to be 10x plus 25y equals 850. All right. I guess here, if you're going to eliminate something, I would eliminate x, because if you eliminate y, um, you're going to have to multiply both sides by negative 25, and you're going to have bigger numbers. So... I guess try to keep the numbers a little bit smaller if we can here. So negative 10 times x plus y equals negative 10 times 40. And then the other one staying the same for now, 10x plus 25y equals 850. Uh-oh, I can't write anymore. Okay, reset and it worked. Um, so 850. Then, let's see, simplify the top one. Negative 10x minus 10y equals negative 400. And then the bottom one's staying the same for now. 10x plus 25y equals 850. And then if I add those together, I'm going to get that 15y is equal to 450. And if that's true, then y must be 30. Since that's what 450 over 15 is. Um, and then if y is 30, then if you sub into an original equation to get x, the first one would be simpler. So the x plus y equals 40. That's what I would use here. Because then pretty quickly you can see that x would have to be 10. Right, x plus 30 would be equal to 40, so then that means that x is 10. And then that would be your answer. Um, so I guess the, the final answer, so I'll, I'll squeeze it in here. So the solution, if x is 10, then that means 10 dimes. And if y is 30, 30 quarters. So the way that I arranged it up on the top, x was the number of dimes and y was the number of quarters. So. That must be the solution. Um, and it, if, if you want to check it, you can, right? Like 10 times 0.1 is 1, and then 30 times 0.25 is going to be 7.5. 1 plus 7.5 is 8.5, so it all works out. Um, the other option, if you wanted to use substitution, I think I can squeeze in the, the basic idea here. So if you're going to use substitution, What you would probably do is say that y equals 40 minus x. And so then what that would do is then for the second equation, so like this one right here, if you put the 40 minus x in for y, you're going to end up with 0.1x plus 0.25 times 40 minus x. And then that's going to be equal to 850. And if you solve this, I mean, I guess the, 
the first step, since I'm out of room, I'm going to leave out the multiplication line, but you would clear the decimals out. You'd, you'd end up with 10x plus 25 times 40 minus x equals 850. This will work out. So 10x, um, 25 times 40 is 1,000 minus 25x equals 850. So you'd have negative 15x plus 1,000 equals 850. If you subtract 1,000 from both sides, you get negative 15x equals negative 150. And you can see that this works, right? You're going to get that x equals 10. And then you could go and um, sub back into x plus y equals 40, right? Or just say if y is 40 minus x, then like if x equals 10, then y equals 30. So yeah, it'll work. All right, another mixture. Um, these coffee ones are big in this section, so I wanted to get one in here. I also wanted to get one with some nasty numbers. So the numbers here are a little bit nastier. All right, so it says Lisa wants to mix coffee worth 290 a pound with coffee worth 190 a pound to get 48 pounds of a mixture worth 250 per pound. So how many pounds of each should she use to get that mixture? All right, so I guess if we're gonna make the table, maybe value per pound, right? Because we know one of them's 290, one of them's 190, and then when we get to the total, which I guess I can draw this going way across here, it'll be 250. All right, then the next thing, maybe the amount of coffee. So amount in pounds. So then you say like, and this is that, that case again where um, if you said this unknown was X, this one was Y, but you know the total has to be 48. Um, you could rewrite Y as 48 minus X and then do it with substitution. Um, maybe that's the way to go this time. Um, maybe to do that first. But oh, I'll, I'll keep it with the, um, the other way around and then we'll switch it later, I think. Uh, and then the total value it would be the value per pound multiplied by the amount. So here, 2.9x, then this one's gonna be 1.9y, and then this one is 2.5 times 48, which is 120. Yeah, 96 plus 24. All right, so if we were gonna do this with elimination, I guess we'll do it that way first. So then once again, it's use this column and use this column to get your equations. Because when you add the two individual amounts together, x plus y, you gotta get 48. And then the second one, and I don't really need to carry that to um, two places, so I'm not going to. I'm just gonna say 2.9x plus 1.9y equals 120. So you could do it that way, and then you want to clear those decimals, right? Multiply both sides of that bottom equation by 10. So you'd have x plus y equals 48. And then on the bottom, 10 multiplied by 2.9x plus 1.9y equals 10 times 120. So then we're going to have x plus y equals 48 still on top. And on the bottom, that's going to be 29x plus 19y equals 1,200. All right. So then you could do it like that from here. Um, this is one where it looks like what's going to happen is that you get some huge, huge numbers. Um, so I was right at first. This one we should do with substitution because otherwise... You're either going to have to deal with a 48 times 19 or a 48 times 29. I don't want to do it with numbers that big. So, yeah, we could do it with substitution right here. So all we really did so far was clear the decimals anyway. So we'll just say if y is equal to 48 minus x, then what that, what that would say into the other equation is that 29x plus 19 times 48 minus x equals 1200. I guess we still have to deal with the 19 times 48, but oh well. Um, let's see, so then this is going to be 29x plus, 
Okay, 960 minus 48, which is 912 minus 19x equals 1200. We can combine terms a little and say 10x plus 912 equals 1200. And we're going to get that 10x is 288. So x is 28.8 pounds. There. All right. Um, and then we'd have to sub back in in order to get y, but we could just use this, right? Because then if that's what x is, then y is going to be 48 minus 28.8, which is 19.2 pounds. So there are our two amounts. Um, and then if you want to do the check, so kind of looking at this, you can tell that x plus y is going to be 48. That's not a problem. Uh, really, I guess then you got to worry about the other one. So this one, or if you want this one where um, the decimals are gone. So we could do it that way. So like 29x plus 19y, it would be 29 times 28.8 plus 19 times 19.2. So let's see, we're, we're gonna get 80, let's see, it's 835.2 plus 364.8, and yeah, that's gonna add up to 1200, so we got it. All right, so that one, I mean, I guess procedurally it's not that different, just that the numbers were a little uglier. Um, number five, uniform motion. So this is like the with the current and event and against the current, that type of stuff. So like it says here, Greg can row his boat down a stream 75 miles in three hours, but his return trip against the current takes longer, it takes five hours. So then what's the speed of the boat in still water? What's the speed of the current? So I guess since those are the things we're gonna be solving for, we're gonna need those to be the unknowns. So I'm gonna say let S, that's a terrible looking S, to be honest. All right, let me get that out of there. That's better. Let S equal the speed of the boat in still water. And then we're gonna let C equal the speed of the current. Okay, well then, um, if we're using speed, then speed is equal to distance over time. So I think we're going to use that. Okay, so the distance is the same, right? 75 miles down, 75 miles back. So I guess I can put those both into 75. And then the time, it's three miles to get down and then, or three hours, not three miles. Three hours to get down, five hours to get back. Right, so we know what those are. This speed is going to be faster, right? Because it didn't take as long. Um, but this is when you're with the current. So you get that current speed added on to the speed of the boat if there was no current, if it was in still water. So here it would be S plus C, where you're with the current, you get the current added on. When you're going against the current, you got to have it subtracted off the speed of the current. So then that's going to be S minus C. So then if you look at what we've got, if you just use the idea that speed is equal to distance over time, that's actually going to really speed this up. That wasn't supposed to be a pun either. Um, but if, if you do that here, you'd have the S plus C is equal to 75 over three and then you'd have the S minus C is equal to 75 over five. But 75 over three and 75 over five are nice round numbers, right? 75 over three is gonna be 25, and the 75 over five is 15. So we have the S plus C is 25, S minus C is 15. And we can do this as a system of equations, but we're not gonna to have to do very much to solve it because 
this is actually set up perfectly for elimination already. If you just add these together, you've got C and minus C. So I would say just add them, you get that 2S is equal to 40, which would then mean that S would have to be 20. So there's part of the answer right there. Um, but then if S is 20, you could pick either of those that you want to, and you're gonna get that C has to be five. Right, like 20 plus C equals 25, C is five, or 20 minus C is 15, then C is five. So either way. Um, so really with this one and with the, the speed ones generally, um, it tends not to be anything too over the top to do the solving. Um, it's just knowing how to set this up, specifically how to get these two speeds, like the S plus C and the S minus C. I think the best way to think about it is that if you're going with the current, you gotta add it, right? You add the current in, um, and if you're going against the current, you gotta subtract it. So that's probably the best thing to remember there. Um, and I think, like if you remember that, then these aren't really too bad. Um, now we get into the new stuff, like the brand new stuff. All right, so we have that a rental car agency charges $13 per day plus 15 cents a mile to rent a certain car. Another agency has slightly different charges. And we wanna know how many miles would we have to, be, would we have to drive for the cost of a car from the first agency to equal the cost of a car from the second agency. Okay, I guess I need a variable for mileage. So, um, right, because that's ultimately what we're solving for, right, how many miles will have to be driven. So I'm gonna say let X represent mileage. Okay, so then what we're gonna have, I guess for the first agency, um, and these are gonna come out as functions. So, and I guess they're both costs, but instead of having C1 and C2, I'm just gonna use function notation and call them F and G. So like for the first agency, you have that F of X would be so it's $13 per day plus 15 cents a mile. That would be 13 plus 0 0.15 times X, right? So you multiply the 15 cents by the number of miles driven, and then you gotta add that 13. That flat fee of 13 is always there no matter how many miles you drive. Um, and then if I say the second one is G, so G of X would be $15 per day plus 10 cents a mile. So 15 plus 0 0.10x. So then the way I've got this set up is that F is the cost of renting at the first agency. And then G would be the cost of renting at the second agency. And then we want to know um, when they're going to be equal, right? When the cost of the first is equal to the cost of the second. So what we want, so we want the mileage, so the value of x where f of x equals g of x. Right, so where those two costs are gonna be equal. So then basically we can just set those equal to each other. So we'd have 13 plus 0 0.15x equals 15 plus 0 0.10x. And I suppose clear the decimals, right? So multiply both sides by 100, move the decimal point two places. So we can do that. And then on the left, we're gonna get 1300 plus 15X. And then on the right, we're gonna get 1500 plus 10X. And then from there, the solving isn't gonna to be too bad, right? Because then you say, well, you subtract 10X from both sides, and then you're gonna get 1300 plus 5X is equal to 1500 
and then you subtract 1300 from both sides and you're going to get that 5x is equal to 200 and then if that's true then x would have to be 40 right so 40 miles all right well then you could do a check here right you could just check both um both functions and make sure you get the same thing right because if you get different things then something must have gone wrong but if we just kind of go through and evaluate f of 40 and then g of 40 f of 40 would be 13 plus 0.15 times 40 but 0.15 times 40 is 6. so that's 13 plus 6 which is 19. and then g of 40 would be 15 plus 0.1 times 40, but 0.1 times 40 is 4. That's 15 plus 4, also 19. So we're all set, right? That works. All right, next one. Um, suppose that the quantity supplied and quantity demanded of a book at a bookstore are given by the following functions. So S for supply, D for demand, and then we want to find the equilibrium price so the price at which supply and demand are equal all right so um, what we want so an a so we want the value of p such that s of p is equal to d of p right where supply is equal to demand so basically we can just set those equal to each other and then solve for p so we're going to have negative a thousand plus 150p equals 20,000 minus 100p so i guess we can add 100p to both sides so then we're going to have negative a thousand plus 250p on the left and then we're going to have 20,000 on the right and then we're going to get the p term by itself and add a thousand to both sides and if we do that we're going to get that 250p is equal to 21,000 and if there are if 250 times 4 is 1,000 then this is going to end up being 84 when you do the division by 250. So apparently that's the equilibrium price is $84 for that book. So I guess I could put the dollar sign in there. Um, and then what's the equilibrium quantity? Um, I guess you could use either function, right? Because they should be the same. If it's the equilibrium quantity, you should have the same supply and demand. So either way, um, I guess, and I'll just do both real quick. So S of 84 would be negative a thousand plus 150 times 84 and what you end up with is 11,600 then if you go the other way so if you use the demand function instead you're still going to get the 11,600 it'll be 20,000 minus 100 times 84 so yeah that's 20,000 minus 8,400 that's 11,600 so either way you wouldn't really have to do both both of these here you just need one of them right you just need to get that 11,600 but I by doing both effectively I just did a check all right last one um, another intersection of two linear functions and it's going to be revenue and cost and breaking even so that equilibrium point once again all right it says Izzy wants to sell cookies at a yard sale and it's going to cost her $14 to set up the stand so there's a fixed cost and she determines that each cookie will cost 15 cents to make variable cost um, and decides to sell them for 50 cents each all right so I guess the fixed cost and variable cost thing if um, if you're into accounting see those terms all the time um, but writing revenue as a function of the number of cookies sold well the money she's going to take in is when she's selling them for 50 cents each so if we write revenue as a function of x we have it as r of x like that 
And really, it's just going to be this. It's just x times 50 cents or x times 0.5 if you want to, if you want to have this written in dollars. Um, then cost... This is a little bit more complex because each cookie costs 15 cents, but there's also that cost of $14 to set up the stand. So we got to get both of those in there. So $14 for the stand plus 15 cents times X, the number of cookies sold. So it would look like that. And then um, to find the number of cookies that Izzy has to sell to break even, Basically, what we're trying to do is we want to find X where the cost and revenue are equal. So our R of X equals C of X. Okay, well, R of X is 0.5 times X. C of X is 14 plus 0.15 times X. And I guess you could go either way. You could clear the decimals first or you could... Um, get all the X terms on the left. Um, I guess we'll just multiply both sides by 100. And if you do that, you're going to get that 50X is equal to 1400 plus 15X. And then from there, subtract 15X from both sides and you get 35X equals 1400. And then if you do the division, X is going to be 1400 over 35, which is 40? Yeah, okay. So 40 cookies should do it. All right, so six, seven, and eight are the brand new ones where it's the intersection of two linear functions, usually cost and revenue or something to that effect, right? Because that's a linear function, so is that. We just set them equal to each other, and effectively we're finding the intersection. Um, and if I scroll up for a second, right here, supply and demand, two linear functions. We ended up setting them equal to each other. And then up here, we had a linear function for each rental car agency. We set those equal to each other. So that's the new thing. Um, and then those older ones, you can do them the old way. That's totally fine. You'd effectively be doing substitution, and there's nothing wrong with that. Or now you could also use elimination. So I guess if you see the elimination first, do that. If you see the substitution first, do that. I guess that's, that's what I would do. I think whatever you see first, go with it.